I spoke to you about the troposphere, in particular the normal lapse rate, which is normally what happens in the troposphere. Increasing altitude results in decreasing air temperature. Then I spoke to you about the anomalies, lower level inversions, upper level inversions. Now we're headed up to the stratosphere. The most important component of the stratosphere, especially for us as human beings and life on planet Earth, is the ozone layer. The ozone layer is the protective layer of ozone molecules that's centered primarily in the stratosphere. Let's unpack that backwards. Where is it? Overwhelmingly between 12 and 25 miles above the surface, and it's densest at about 15 miles up. As you can see, this is solidly in the stratosphere. What is it? Well, it's ozone molecules. An ozone molecule is an O3. O3 means three oxygen atoms linked together, making an ozone molecule. As you're aware, 21% of the atmosphere is oxygen. That's an O2. That means two oxygen atoms linked together, making an oxygen molecule. You're familiar with H2O, water. Two hydrogens, one oxygen, linked together, making water. If it's protecting us from something, we must be able to describe what that protection is from. Here's what it is. There's something called the electromagnetic spectrum. The electromagnetic spectrum is the range of wavelengths radiated from objects or from bodies. As I mentioned to you before, we are only concerning ourselves with two things. The sun, which produces shortwave radiation, and the earth, which produces longwave radiation. If you take a look at this diagram, you can see that there's both short and longwave radiation presented on it. At the bottom of the diagram, as you go to the left, you can see the wavelengths are getting tighter and tighter and closer and closer. That's shortwave radiation. As you go to the right, you can see the wavelengths are spreading out. That's longwave radiation. At the top of the diagram, you can see gamma rays, x-rays, ultraviolet light, visible light, which is what we as human beings are capable of seeing, infrared light, microwaves, and radio waves. And again, in the middle, you can see the two arrows. As you go to the right, longer wavelength, lower frequency, lower energy. As you go to the left, shorter wavelength, higher frequency, higher energy. Again, if you take a look at this diagram, you can see wavelengths. And if you look in the middle where it says visible light, you can see that visible light goes from violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, over to red. If you look carefully, especially comparing red and violet, you can see that the red wavelength, literally what we pick up as the color red, is a longer wavelength than violet. Our eyes detect that and see those things as the colors they are based on their wavelength. Then if you look down below, you can see where visible light is at. If you go to the left, it says ultraviolet, x-rays, gamma rays, cosmic rays. And it's showing you what the wavelengths themselves look like. And it's showing you how long they are. You can see that as you go all the way towards the left, the wavelengths become hundreds of a thousandths of a micron, very, very close together. And then as you go to the right, away from visible light, infrared light, microwaves, TV and FM radio wavelengths, AM radio wavelengths, and then long radio wavelengths, you can see that those are, in some cases, more than a 1,000 meters long each wavelength. So there's significant difference between the wavelengths. What the ozone layer is protecting us from is part of the ultraviolet or UV spectrum. You can see that that on our diagram is just to the left just shorter than violet. Some of the ultraviolet light is filtered by the ozone layer. Now, not all of it. How much gets filtered out? Exactly the right amount. That's always the key to the Earth's system. 
we have what we have on this planet and what you see around you, which most importantly is life, because the planet operates the way it operates. Again, if you look at this diagram, you can see to the left-hand side, there's short wavelengths and long wavelengths. Solar radiation is short wave radiation, whereas terrestrial radiation, Earth radiation, is long wave radiation. And you can see that down along the bottom. There's been a problem with ozone de depletion over the last 50 or 60 years because of chemicals that human beings have made. Ozone depletion has been linked to cataracts in your eyes, which means that it makes you go blind, skin cancer, genetic disruptions in plants and animals. But in the 1980s, owing to following the science, there began to be an effort to decrease the production of these two chemicals. CFCs and nitrous oxide. By doing that, what happened was we've slowly begun to repair the ozone layer. What happens is CFCs and nitrous oxide attach themselves in the upper atmosphere to the ozone molecule and break it apart. When they do that, you just have quantitatively fewer ozone molecules and with fewer ozone molecules, what's going to happen is more ultraviolet light will be able to penetrate through down to the surface and cause those things that you see there. However, by cutting down on and then eliminating the production, especially of CFCs, which was used in refrigeration and styrofoam. So refrigeration means air conditioning, but it can mean other things too. By cutting down on the production of these things, What's happened is we have cut down on the amount of that that's in the atmosphere, which cuts down on the number of ozone molecules that get destroyed by human beings. 